Welcome. This practice is called Meet Your Protector Exercises. We're going to show you a list to get to know your protectors. Look over the list of common protector roles and you can add any that aren't on the list that might be relevant to you. For example, your protector might be an inner critic, which criticizes you from the inside, or an outer critic that criticizes other people and finds fault with everybody or anybody around you, a compliant protector that tells you that you have to always comply with other people's expectations, or an anxious protector that's always looking around the corner to see what might happen, a dissociative protector that spaces you out and makes it hard for you to be present, makes you tired, appearance protectors that are checking the mirror or checking your body to see if you're fat or too thin or too fat or too thin or dress some way or not some way. Um, somaticizing protectors, maybe there's a headache or a stomach ache or weakness or tiredness or any kind of physical symptom. Intimacy protectors that push you to either overactive in sexuality or underactive in sexuality and avoid or approach too much. Food protectors that get you obsessed with food, either diet culture or binging or purging or anything related to food. Mood, mood altering protectors, let's say that, like drugs and alcohol or prescription drugs that might change your mood, that give you immediate benefits. Or mindfulness protectors which sounds like how could that be a protector, but if we overly practice mindfulness and take ourselves out of the present time experience, then that might be serving as a protector. So here we go. Let's go back to the original slide. And notice if this protector is proactive for you, trying to stop feelings from arising or reactive for you, trying to distract you from feelings. Ask permission to get to know this protector. Once you have permission to get to know this protector, ask, what does it believe would happen if it stopped doing its job? Hmm. What would happen if you stopped doing your job? Who does it protect?
permission to help the part it protects. If it did share who it protects, set an intention and write down who it protects and work with the vulnerability in a way that is familiar to you. If your protector is uncomfortable giving you permission to help that part, we're just going to stay curious. Or if you're not curious, help your reactive parts to unblend and ask why. If it says something along the lines of you'll be overwhelmed by that vulnerable part, Ask for permission to ask the exile to not overwhelm. Then ask the exile if in return for getting the attention it needs, would it be willing to stay differentiated and not overwhelm? If the protector says you are not capable of helping that part, Ask it if it would be willing to get to know you better. Ask it then to look you in the eye and let you know who it sees there. If it sees a reactive part, take a moment to help that part differentiate. Ask that reactive part if it would be willing to go into a waiting room and not overwhelm. If it sees some quality of self, ask, what is it like to meet me? Do I have your permission now to help that vulnerable part who you protect? They were just curious. If the reactive part is still there, or the reactive part might have stepped away gone into a waiting room? And is the protector allowing you to get to know the vulnerable part? When you're ready, you can thank your parts for anything that they let happen today. And thank you for joining me. This practice has been a practice from the Internal Family Systems Skills Training Manual by Anderson, Swayze, and Schwartz. Thank you for joining me.